Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to talk about the Yukon Huskies. Now, the Yukon Huskies have won the championship the last two years and obviously done it in very dominant fashion. But that being said, there are some significant changes. So last year, between two years ago and last year, they lost quite a few players. But this year, they lost a lot more. They lost four NBA players, which is that's, that's tough to recover from. And so we're going to see ultimately if the role players and who or the backups and the, the ones they got from transfers are going to be able to essentially fill that void. So we're looking at, in particular, we're going to look at the first half against Rhode Island and see if they essentially met the expectations in four categories that I think are the ones they dominated in the last couple of years. And that would be their cutting, their post play, their defense, and their shooting. With the last two, I think, being the most important, their defense and their shooting have been absolutely top of the game the last couple of years. Let's go. So the first thing I think that's crucial to establish is that Rhode Island is a pretty good team. They have a huge amount of transfers. Essentially, the only one I know, know, is this Jamarcus Lawrence right here. He played at Nebraska, and I followed Nebraska pretty close last year. And he was, I, I think, a very underrated player overall. He is a talented individual who can shoot, can drive, can play good defense. And so the first category we're looking at is this cutting right here. So the concept that cutting provides is essentially you have other players creating space on the outside, being drawn out to shooters, and that creates, when you have motion or you have some kind of action getting athletic players going downhill, it gives openings like this. And so this is a good finish from number 30, who I believe is an incoming freshman, a pretty highly touted freshman, McNeely, I believe. And so that's a good sign to see from the beginning. However, one other thing to notice is that cutting by and large has a lot to do with making the defense respect you as shooters and then you can kind of build off of that so sometimes the cutting follows after you've already established that you're a good shooting team so we can wait a little bit for that all right the second category we're looking at is post play so obviously UConn lost Klingon last year and so because Klingon is gone here it's replaced with Johnson and so from the beginning oh this isn't even Johnson this is their backup behind Johnson from the beginning, this is the earliest clip where they actually went into the post. So we can see that given that it happened five and a half minutes into the game, it's probably not something they're going to go to with regularity. Also because of this shot. Like that's not not a great look. This is not the look that you would have got with Klingon or with Sonoga the year before. And so while I don't think this is hugely detrimental to UConn, I do think it's somewhat of a cause for concern if they can't go to what their baseline in, or at least a good backup is if they have a massive advantage, they could just throw the ball into Klingon and have them work one-on-one -on -one and get decent efficiency that way. All right, so now we get to see Johnson. And so this is actually the first clip I think they, I think I saw a period of them posting up and it came eight minutes and 48 seconds. So 12 minutes into the game, 11 minutes into the game. And so they do a decent job. And the one nice thing is that UConn is obviously, we're going to talk about the shooting in a second, but this help right here is uh, communicates one of two things. One, either they don't think three is a shooter, or two, they think that you're an effective post player. So either way, it gives UConn opportunities. So it's probably good to see that in the first place. And Johnson does a nice little hook. And so I'm curious how efficient he can be on that kind of shot. But obviously that was a good shot and it went in. So we have to see more of it to really have a good judgment. But that's by and large a good sign for UConn. Then we get to our third category and that's going to be defense. I think this one is super crucial. UConn wasn't really known for their defense in the past. But like I think it was an un super undervalued from the media's perspective. Part of what UConn. UConn was a very good defensive team. They just kind of outshone it by having really good offensive talent. But I love the fact they're still keeping the ball pressure. DR is athletic. They have athletic players for sure. And so the fact that they're able to pressure all the way up, absolutely love, love that because it just causes a little bit more stress on the defense. You'll get a few steals every once in a while, but it prevents the defense from doing what they want. You can see we have ball pressure all the way around. This is something that I highlighted last year. They was absolutely beautiful. They won a couple games simply based, I think, on this 
really good ball pressure and forcing the offense and to do different things. And so this is a really good first defensive possession from UConn. And so I'm really, really happy to see this. And so if you look at the end result, you think uh, Rhode Island scored more than I thought they would score. And yeah, but I think Rhode Island's going to be a decent team. Like I'm telling you, they have a lot of transfers and a lot of good transfers. All right, so our second defensive clip, again, we can see ball pressure. Okay, as soon as he catches it, you are right on the ball. If we go all the way around, look how close, 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 close everyone is. Okay, They trust themselves to also provide help, which is a beautiful thing, but they are in your face making sure you feel the pressure constantly, and that leads to little mistakes. I'm telling you it does. And then so as this ball is going to get moved around, Diara, who I think is going to be a very good defensive player, Essentially, he sees his green screen is setting. He says, oh, it's logical that they're probably going to try and swing this ball over here. And all he does is says, well, if that's what they're going to do, why not try and get in the way? Try and just go get this ball telegraphed a little too much. He's close, as we've been talking about. He's close. And so he just takes two steps. Boom. Go get that ball. Just gets a hand in there and does it without giving up his defensive defensive frame in the first place so he just gets his right hand in there his inside hand to the ball and so that way he, if it gets through him his body is out of position that's just textbook beautiful defense he doesn't gamble by going all the way to half court or jumping aggressively he sticks his hand out there in the passing lane boom gets a deflection and it leads in transition that is absolutely great great basketball from UConn and a very very good positive all right, and then frankly, the most important thing, I think this is something they have to have in order to have real success, and they gotta be able to shoot the ball. They gotta be able to shoot the ball lights out. They gotta be able to shoot the ball with multiple people. Cannot be just simply one person or two persons. You gotta have three people. It's gotta be multiple people that you can have that shoot at a high efficiency. Newton, Spencer, you gotta be able to replace. And we saw that last year. However, you gotta be able to see, can other players shoot, okay? You got 10 helping off aggressively to make sure on this drive, you got to be able to hit the outside players. You got to be able to hit them and punish them when they overcommit. And you overcommit. And one not only was confident to shoot that ball, he did shoot that ball. We actually saw ball play a little bit last year. I was a big fan of him last year. I thought potentially a really good offensive weapon. And so glad to see that he's still out there. One of the huge aspects about UConn is this motion, and that's what allows for these cuts is because you see this motion and you get and you get essentially drawn up into their shooters, and so that provides slips to the basket, and that's something they did really well in the past. And so the first step to that is making them respect you on the perimeter. And so as I talked about, Caravan is a crucial part of their three-point shooting. Catches it, defender, as we watch him go through this screen instead of following it this way he chooses to cut underneath johnson here just gets a piece of him and because the post player gets a piece of him he's a little slow no hand up and caravan is a lights out shooter he is going to make you pay with that shot he was maybe the best or spencer the second best shooter in last year's team he is a good good shooter as we're talking about these cuts so again we see 30 coming off this screen and this is a good sign because I told you he's new to the program this year. And so the fact that he's willing to also shoot this. So first off, again, we're watching the defender. As the defender comes off this screen right here, he chooses to go the long way around. And essentially all UConn does is as he comes this way, he just stops. He says, if you're going to go the long way around or try and shortcut it, I'm just going to stop. Make you guard me out here on the perimeter because you can no longer get to that area because you chose to take the shortcut. And so he stops. A clean pass, and again, no hesitation to shoot. Huge fan of the no hesitation to shoot. That is a really good sign as well. Even though he didn't make it, the no hesitation, make them respect you on the perimeter. All right, and our final clip, and this is in transition. I love this because it's put so much strain on the defense. As a defender, in transition, you're taught to just stay with the rim. Okay, this dude is doing what the textbook defense is. Take away the rim first, no matter what. And when UConn... If you spread the floor, if you go with shooters on the outside, it puts so much strain on the defense. I mean, obviously the Steph Curry example is the one that comes to mind, but this just pressures the defense because he was thinking, I'm guarding the rim. He now has to immediately change track and get out here to 23, who we don't know that much as a shooter, but given the fact he went to the three-point line, 
great footwork, great shot, and that, like, with confidence, you got to love that, and you got to think that Ross is going to be a good shooter for the future. I'm a huge fan of that from UConn as well. So in conclusion, I think the cutting is something that will probably progress more as the year goes on simply because they gain the respect of shooters because they have a lot of new players. Post play, I think post play is something we're going to see markedly different this year. I think post play is going to be a lot less than the last two years simply because the talent isn't the same as it was before. However, that being said, I think they're okay not relying on that because I think they have better shooters, potentially better shooters on average. The defense, I think, is going to be good. I love the ball pressure we saw early. Get in their grill. I think UConn's going to still do that really well. They're really well coached, obviously. And shooting, I think their shooting is going to be lights out. I think they have probably more well-rounded shooters even than last year, which I think is a really, really good sign. If you enjoyed, feel free to like and subscribe.